Well, it's about this restaurant called The Shed at Dulwich that he created a fake restaurant and made it the number one restaurant on TripAdvisor in a matter of months. Uncommon wealth. They have they're, really long, skinny yeah, legs. They, they're, they're not, they're so thin. Yes. If I were an animal, I'd want to be a trap. <laughs> they're the runway models of <laughs> the animal people. Yes, they are. Commonwealth, Commonwealth, the former empire, now Commonwealth. Is it relevant? Probably not. But why not give this part a shot? Stay tuned. Here comes Uncommonwealth, the podcast. Hello, hello. Uh, everybody ready? Because we are live from the Uncommonwealth Pandemia Studios. I am here with the fantastic Catherine Rawlins and the wonderful Jimmy HVD and the delightful Adam Mueller. Everybody say hello. Hey. How hello. You hello. The podcast. All right, let's let's uh, let's kick it off with a little discussion about. You know, this is a country we don't talk about that much. Fiji. Oh. And, anyone been to Fiji? A I've been vacation. to Fiji twice. Yeah. What? Amazing. Beautiful. Oh, because because of the Australia thing. <laughs> yeah, they, that's yeah. A, that old Australia thing. <laughs> you may have heard of it. Because it's, it's uh, close. You mean because of the <laughs> geograph geographical <laughs> the, proximity? The Piers, you made it sound like you, you need is... to get like a rash, a, 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 a cream. I mean, for it. <laughs> so here's the, here's the question I have for you: Fiji water. Oh. Uh, do we believe the hype? Um, oh, so Fiji, they claim that Fiji water is from a sustainable ancient aquifer in Fiji. They distribute it to more than 60 countries around the globe. Everyone knows this water. It's in every uh, convenience store and bodega in the U.S. How can there be that big an aquifer in an island to, to sell water to 60 countries around the world? It's been it's been around since 1996. It's it's bought. They claim that it's bottled and shipped from Fiji. From this, uh, but the but the company is headquartered in L.A. Oh. That seems very suspicious to me. And it was founded by a Canadian businessman, David Gilmore, founded Fiji what? Water in 1996. That's not, a, that's not, a, that's not a Fijian name, David Gilmore. Yeah, and then in, yeah, and then in 2000, in, in 2004, he sold it to a company called The Wonderful Company for 50 million dollars. And then that's, in, in 2009, like it sold out low. Sounds like he sold early. Yeah. It's still a lot of money, it right? It must be worth yeah, hundreds now. Hundreds no, of millions. Not compared to what it's worth now, right? I, well, here's the interesting thing is that... Uh, so, okay. So, in 2009, allegedly, they had $85 million in sales. So, if they had $85 million in sales and he sold it five years earlier for $50 million, yeah, he got out way too soon. I feel like this is all building up to Adam saying that Fiji faked the moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's another... Like, so, this is... Just, <laughs> They claim it's bottled in so and so. No, it does. It gets interesting. It gets more interesting, right? Because in, in 2010, Fiji Water bought vineyards in California in an effort to diversify. Why is a, a, aqua, a company with this aquifer want to be a winery? Um, and then in, two, in 2007, 2008, Cause, before cause they Jesus bought the, uh, jo joined as an employee. So, uh, Well, then they wouldn't need the vineyards because they could just Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Wine. All right. So nice okay. try there, Jimmy. So, uh, sorry, sorry that my joke based on someone who clearly didn't join as an employee didn't actually make yeah, yeah. sense. <laughs> <laughs> in 2006, Fiji Water had a run-in with the city of Cleveland because Fiji Water in 2006 ran an advertisement and their slogan was Fiji because it's not bottled in Cleveland. <laughs> That's and the hilarious. city got very, the city's water department the, got very upset. It's the Australia of cities. That's great. Cleveland? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, but Cle Cleveland? What? People Cleveland? just randomly shitting on it for no reason. It's minding its own business. No, there's a reason you shit on Cleveland. <laughs> Well, the cool. Cleveland Water Department ran a test comparing Cleveland tap water to Fiji water. Oh my God. Fiji water reportedly contained more micrograms of arsenic per liter than tap water from Cleveland. Yeah. I love it. I mean, nope. their whole selling point is that, you know, our water has been rolling through the rocks of Fiji for five million years. And you're like, yeah, yeah it tastes like it. But same with it's Evian. It is not from France. Like yeah, somewhere allegedly. In allegedly. It's all Nestle. You're saying. Fiji water is from Cleveland. I'm. I'm. What's the conclusion here? No, I'm saying that according to this, this one study, the Cleveland's water was actually cleaner and safer than Fiji water. Surely it costs more money to get water from Fiji to yeah. America than. Cleveland's I mean, what? How much is a boat? Three, four dollars. That's kind of a lot. My parents, who aren't, uh, we know that my dad's not that big of a fan of this podcast, but, <laughs> um, but he. Uh, so 
Yeah. There's no, no risk in him hearing that. You, so. you can't hate something you've never listened to. <laughs> yeah. I think he listened to a few minutes. He was like, mm, no, I'm in radio, but I still think this is terrible. Um, oh my God. Can, can he get us on the radio? <laughs> he could, but he is <laughs> deciding not yeah. to. But they, my parents are obsessed with Fiji water. That's the only bottled water what, that they drink. Why? I, What's the, is it the taste? What do they? My, mo- my mother taste? fell for the ruse too. Is it the square oh, bottles? They store better? They it's a great label. Better it the is. label. It's it's like I and I did a blind test. Branding. I came over for Branding. dinner and I didn't tell them and I poured Evian. I, I like I I, I yeah. put it in Fiji bottles and and, and they, they, did. they claimed to hate Evian. Like yeah, like, okay. love it. And they were downing this. Water love it. Yes. I, I told them it was yeah. Evian. Brilliant. <laughs> so apparently Fiji's running out of water because of the Fiji Water Company. Yeah. Okay. Well, I feel whether or not you like Fiji water, Fiji as uh, a country is amazing. It's beautiful, and you should visit if you ever have the opportunity because it's it is awesome. So between Australia and Fiji, you go to Fiji for a day trip, <laughs> probably. But I've lived in Australia <laughs> for trip. my life, so like. Uncommon wealth. Jimmy's exotic animals. He is Australian, so he likes animals, and his name is Jimmy. Okay, friends, another uh, exciting animal to share with you, and I'm bloody excited about this one. This is a, this is an incredible animal. Uh, as Adam starts eating a banana, <laughs> <laughs> the most appropriate time to have a mid-morning snack. Oh, Halfway through the pod, a little low on potassium. <laughs> it's a long pod. <laughs> you gotta, it's a long banana. You gotta keep your energy up. All right. Um, oh okay, so God. the animal this week to discuss is the giraffe. Don't freeze, Ooh. Adam. Ooh, I love giraffe. giraffe. <laughs> one of the most exciting. So here's, I think the last ex- the cr- last animal we discussed was um, Scotland's national animal, which is the unicorn. And it made, <laughs> and it made and me I, think, I, though. That's when I learned they aren't real. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. If you were to describe to someone who'd never seen slash heard of either of those two animals, the giraffe is the less believable animal, right? Yeah. Like a horse with a horn is way more believable than a, a bloody weird camel with a leopard skin so with a freaking six foot neck this animal is all sorts of weird but it's amazing let's run through some of those. Like, do, do, guess how high they are if you don't know obviously they're the, the tallest animal on earth i think 15 probably, feet uh, 17. okay you guys are very accurate 15 to 16 is a female fully grown You're female so pierce, that, and then 17 18 is a is a male and they, they so males fully grown way up to three thousand pounds Wow. What was it? 3,000 kilograms. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a difference. Jimmy. A big difference. A big difference. <laughs> I got, it's got to be pounds. There's no way. Uh, yeah, yeah. It'd be pounds. I'm just you understand make... kilograms. I'm sure that makes a big difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be like 5,000 pounds. <laughs> It's like a Mack truck. Um, so how much How much do you reckon they eat each day? So we'll go with 3,000 pounds as their weight. In terms of weight of stuff they eat? Yeah. Oh, so a key fact is that they are um, herbivores. So they only eat like shrubs and leaves. Because I feel like they're like the anorexic animal. You know, they have they're, really long skinny yeah, legs. They, they're thin. not, they're so thin. Yes. If I were an animal, I'd want to be a trap. <laughs> they're the runway models of <laughs> the animal. People. Yeah, they are. The swimsuit model. They're, they're double zeros. <laughs> yeah. I so assume I all they, they do is eat. Like they just graze all day. That's all yeah. they yeah. do is eat. They snack Sleep. all day. They don't eat large meals because that's better for their metabolism. That's yeah. how they, they eat leaves that no other animal can reach. You know, they so it's like the models that were eating kale long before we knew it existed. <laughs> and now they're eating some new leaf that we've never heard of yet. <laughs> Yeah, the but they probably they, they probably what eat hundreds of pounds a day, right? It's actually not that much. It's only seventy five pounds a day. Really? Which is which was yeah, which was less. What do you than mean only seventy five pounds? Do you know how much leaf that is? <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of leaf. That's, that's fair. a big salad bowl. <laughs> That's very true, Piers. <laughs> so, okay, but be- because they eat so many leaves, this is pretty cool. They they only drink water like every couple of days. Oh. They get all of their water that's, from the leaves they eat. Secret? Yeah, <laughs> just eat your leafy greens and then you don't need it. <laughs> but and it's also because if you should Google this, um, giraffes are very vulnerable when they uh, drink water. From, like from say a crocodile attack but they uh-huh. they because their legs are so tall their legs are so long and gangly and they're, they're ne- they can't actually reach the water just standing up so they have to spread their legs in this like weird awkward kind yeah. of pose just to be able to get their heads to the to the surface of the the lake or to drink uh-huh. They're, they're, it's very weird looking. The giraffes they're, don't look yeah. nice. Why? Because they're already always ready to like take flight. 
Yeah. Is that giraffes, right? giraffes almost never like go on the ground. They they're always standing. They sleep they standing. Sleep. They give yeah. birth standing. Except. They okay. So okay. Oh, wow. there's too many fun facts about giraffes. So another fun fact: they sleep in a 24-hour window. They sleep probably about tops 20 minutes. Wow. Oh, usually, God. usually way less. Usually, it's like a few minutes in a 24-hour window. That's they why take so like, skinny. Wow. Yeah, they take power naps of like thirty seconds to two minutes, and then yeah. if they're super worn out, they will like, they will sit down on the ground for like a five minute nap, and that's they curl like up how, like a dog. That's like how Churchill got through World War Two. He just took twenty minute naps every like four or five hours. Oh my it's god, not true. War, yeah, it's war fact. But so yeah, they, they, didn't Leonardo they, da Vinci only sleep like three hours? Is that two hours a night or three hours a night? I think you're thinking of The Rock. <laughs> Uh, 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 Mark Wahlberg. Dwayne Johnson. But they, they give birth standing up. They're, all, they're yeah. always standing up. Which, again, because they're so freaking tall, if you're a baby giraffe, like you you, you've, got a, you've got a one and a half meter fall to the earth when you are born. Baby giraffes, calves, they, they can walk within 30 minutes of being born. Yeah. Because they're wow. so they're so vulnerable as a little cat, and so they thirty minutes they're they're up and running around. So that's again another amazing thing to YouTube is baby giraffes their first steps. They're like you know, I love those um, videos. Yeah. Very well, cool. horses are the same way, right? I think I feel like most animals, when they give birth, the the babies are further developed yes. than human babies. Yeah, you can't yeah. do anything. Human babies for a suck. They're just they they're so useless. Oh my god. What What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> So what um what do you think is the collective noun for a group of giraffes? Oh, oh I think I knew a, a meadow or something like that. A, uh, uh, it's, a gallop. It, no, it's a tower. A tower. Oh. That's awesome. They're, they're insane. They've got the same amount of neck vertebrae as humans because they're mammals as well, giraffes. How crazy is that? They've got a six-foot neck. What else? Oh, this is a great one, Catherine. So I didn't – like clearly pregnancy is – um you can tell pregnancy in urine – I guess that must be a common trait amongst either mammals or lots of animals because obviously you pee on a stick for a pregnancy death. So male male giraffes will t- taste a female's urine to determine her fertility before mating. Oh, my God. Just goes in for a little taste before hopping on. Male giraffes fighting is violent. Oh, with the neck. Whack, yeah. yeah. Oh, just, that's they wild. Stand, they stand side by side and just take it in turns, whacking each other with yeah. their necks and, they w- and their horns. It's like a whip. Yeah. Yeah, they and they end up bleeding it with these yeah. giant gashes on their... It's super violent. Yeah. yeah. I saw a YouTube video of a, like, someone on safari that had their window open and the giraffe sticks its head into the car. Oh, yeah. th- th- and th- and the, 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 the head of the giraffe is just massive. massive. Yeah. Yeah. And the giraffe and they're, was they're, totally friendly, but the people are freaking out. It's very funny. Well, they're, they're, Our they're mother, my my mother used to do that at safari. We you drive in drive through safari, she'd open all the windows and we'd really? freak out and she'd let <laughs> and it has this giant purple tongue. It's like Yeah, they're like fifty they're like fifty centimeters long. Yeah. And they can I forget the word, but they can like curl around. That's how they grab leaves. Yeah. They curl so they can do uh-huh. but in terms of with the safaris, there are hotels, like I think there's one in like Nairobi, I think. But these hotels where the giraffes like will just wander up and stick their head in the window as you're there like yeah. having breakfast or in your room or whatever. And it's it's set up for that purpose. So you're just hanging out and a giraffe pops in and is like, oh, I'll, I'll have some of those grapes. And <laughs> like, how cool would that be? The podcast. I have a fun game for us. I um, I like to, to research food and I research some crazy dishes, kind of disgusting. Maybe, you know, they're, they're food delicacies somewhere around the world. And I'm going to give you the name of the delicacy and you're going to have to guess the country where they are popular. And they're they're all sorts of appetizing if you like strange things. Number one, bird's nest soup. Oh. Where so do you think made, that's sounds, is, the bird's, is the bird's nest the soup bowl? And do you then just put regular, could you put like pumpkin soup in it? Is it regular soup in a nest or is it soup the made of a nest? England. It's a part of France or England. <laughs> in, um, yes, Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> bird's nest soup. I'm going to say it sounds Asian for some reason. You're on the right track. Oh, China. Cambodia. Vietnam. China. 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 It's not a Commonwealth country. um, It'll it'll own the world soon, so it's fine. Fair enough. enough. (laughs) Bowls of bird nest soup can cost between $30 to $100 per bowl. 
Whoa. Uh, they're very popular. Um, they're actually becoming popular in the U.S. as well. Uh, but uh, and you're thinking like because a bird's nest, you'd think it'd be twigs and leaves. But actually, nests, some bird's nests are primarily made out of saliva. Um, and that's what gives oh, it. Oh, that's much more appetizing. This- <laughs> <laughs> no wonder we're all sick. This yeah. blubbery texture uh, is apparently really popular. I'll just spit it in my mouth and I'll, and I'll pay you $20. Okay. That that that's that soup. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> COVID soup. COVID um, soup. Okay. Fertilized eggs. Fertilized of, of what animal? That's so, yeah. Um, chickens. They're um, um, chickens. boiled just before they're due to hatch. Oh, um, oh, I have heard of this though. I have heard of that. It's not. Yeah, that's not. Oh, I don't like that. And they're usually um consumed with with beer uh, yeah. and a pinch of salt. <laughs> yeah, because you just eat them and it's like a crunchy. <laughs> Uh, sounds yeah. like a, that sounds like an Australian yeah. thing. No, it's not. It's not. So it's definitely not uh, New Zealand. They're way too nice. So, um... <laughs> okay, I'll just do the Philippines. Uh, oh, that makes sense. Mothers, yeah. You may uh, have a better could, chance could, of getting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have heard about this. It does not sound very humane or nice because it's essentially like an almost fully developed embryo, right? Fetus, yeah. whatever the right word is for that stage. But you, of but you eat steak. What's the difference? Exactly. exactly. The difference is one is being fully grown and then slaughtered hopefully humanely <laughs> and it's it's a p- part of it's carved off and this is just a anyway i don't say you didn't really describe the difference but okay well i don't i, I feel like that's not an entertaining i would i'd would happily take it offline with you adam and i can share i feel my like thoughts. i feel like planned parenthood should have another place to put all the fetuses i mean as long as you haven't food. named the as long as you haven't named the baby chicken <laughs> That is true, eat. I suppose. <laughs> I can't argue with that logic. <laughs> okay, Extre- excrement coffee. Oh, that's where they shit out the beans, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard of that. That's in a lot of places. Most somewhere. coffees, yeah, just anything you get from a gas station. That's no, right. there's this. Yeah, there's the coffee. No, there's the coffee where they they do pass the beans and then they you know do whatever, roast them or whatever. Yeah. Uh, oh, the what? The, like a, a cow eats it, and they grab it from the cow dung. Yeah, the stomach like, yeah. can't digest. Yeah, it means oh. they come out whole, and the yeah. coffee that results um, tastes like shit. <laughs> <laughs> it has a special aroma. Okay? Uh, uh, earthy tones. Like earthy yeah. tones. What were you Cause expecting? Because what I really want is pink eye inside my body. <laughs> pink brown eye. Where, where do you think? <laughs> That's so gross. Is it like a, is it like a South American country where they're doing that? Indonesia. Okay. Uh, In, the Indonesian what? archipelago with an uh, the, these uh, it takes place the process of of making this coffee takes place on Sumatra, Sumatra. and Sulawesi, and it's expensive coffee. Uh, it'd Wait, be US, you can get that here, can't you? One hundred and twenty yes, to three hundred dollars per pound for this gourmet coffee. It's oh, wow. super. I'll uh, just eat my own beans and filter my <laughs> and make my own. It's cheaper. We, Adam, Adam's going to stick to his finely roasted Brooklyn beans. <laughs> None of this cow shit. Okay, and finally we have a uh, snake wine. Oh, Thailand. Thailand. Close. Cambodia. Vietnam. Ta- Taiwan. Vietnam. You Vietnam. got it. Oh. Okay, okay, so I'm, uh, I'm dying to what, try so what, that. Snot, snake wine, you said? It's actually rice wine bottled with a venomous snake uh, in it. Uh, I tried so snake? hard to find it when I was there. <laughs> yeah. Did you really? Yeah. I love it. They, they probably just saw, like, you know, people in Mexico or putting, you know, worms in tequila bottles. They're like, oh, that's, no, nah, we can do better yeah, than we that. Can, we can. Chuck, a, <laughs> chuck a snake in a wine bottle. <laughs> That's how we do it. The snake is left to steep in the rice wine for many months to let the poison dissolve in the wine. So the ethanol oh. neutralizes the venom. So it's not dangerous, um, which <laughs> is different than snake wine, uh, snake blood wine. Um, that's made by slicing the belly of the blood to drain into the wine and serve a media that could be potentially uh, dangerous. But uh, snake wine is is popular in Southeast Asia and uh, Southern China. Oh, wow, guys! Catherine, usually when you do your food segments, I find myself <laughs> hungry and more. I have zero desire to eat anything right now. I'm starving. <laughs> Uncommon wealth. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I should, I should 
have known. I should have known. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> well, after saying the Commonwealth gets more interesting the moment you leave England, um, we're going to go to England. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, in 2017, a, a journalist, uh, well, it's about this restaurant called The Shed at Dulwich. Uh, this journalist in England was uh, so amused at the way sort of online reviews can uh, bolster a restaurant and, you know, make something that's terrible into a success that he created a fake restaurant and made it the number one restaurant on TripAdvisor in a matter of months. So, uh, and even, wow. Wow. And he even held one night, he actually had people over to his, uh, so it's called The Shed at Dulwich, which sounds like a great sort of hipster yeah, right, restaurant. Right. Like a fun little gastro pub. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he had a foam, you know, he, he promoted it all uh, online. He had a foam menu. The theme was moods. And he used uh, like home goods, like shaving foam and dishwasher tablets to look like, you know, uh, eccentric cooking techniques. Uh, one of the things on the menus was an empathetic vegan clam in a clear broth with parsnip, clear celery and potatoes served with rye crisps. Uh, but of course, was, you know, made out of dishwasher tablets and shaving foam, etc. That's great. He started by pasting posting fake reviews uh, of, of the restaurant online for 10 pounds and then had all his friends uh, write their own reviews. And after, you know, because there was such a giant surge in reviews, it was promoted to the number one spot on TripAdvisor. Wow. It, it sold out all its reservations oh <laughs> my God. for months. Oh, so but cool. what did they put for a location? And did people show up? Or it had uh, no People showed time. up. Uh, on, they, had, they actually served one night of food and they served them frozen dinners and explained to them what had happened. And everyone was actually like, so amused at everything that they uh, enjoyed it. I love, R Russia probably watched that happen. They're like, I reckon we can uh, steal an election by doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That is so crazy, yeah. Piers. Oh, they blindfolded we... everyone and led them down an alley past his house to the end of the garden and uh, inside his garden shed, which had been emptied and turned into a little restaurant. It's amazing that he could get all his friends to write those reviews and we can't get our friends to review our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I've, yeah. I've phoned mom like 16 times trying to explain how to rate something on iTunes. She's like, I'm doing it. <laughs> Our problem was making it real, Adam. It was, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. This is real? It, if you told them it was a real restaurant and he was actually investing his heart and soul into it, no one would have turned up or written mm. anything. The Shed. The shed that's a great name. It's the so Shed fun. at Dulwich. It sounds so fancy. Right. <laughs> and this was a chef? No, it was a, a it's reporter. Just some regular guy? A reporter for Vice, uh, Vice yeah. News. So it was like just to see if I could kind of a thing. Yeah, just to see if he could. Yeah. And he could. And it took a month. Yeah. I mean, it That's really makes cool you think about the reviews that you look at on, you know, yeah. Yelp and TripAdvisor and all that stuff. Like, they can all be, they're all manipulated. Yeah. The, the moment they started monetizing Yelp, it was, you know, it's over. It's just. But people still will decide stuff based off of Yelp reviews. Yeah. I just walk into a restaurant and say, put your hands up if you're having fun. And then. Based on that reaction, I decide whether to stay or not. <laughs> so weird. But it kind of it, it kind of reminds me of like the discussion we had earlier about like why do people like a certain bottled water or something? It's like all the marketing and the, marketing. the bottling yeah. and like the name. It's like the shed at Dulwich, Fiji water. Like it yeah. all. It just sounds like it should be good. And I mean, who amongst us doesn't actually want to go to yeah. the shed at Dulwich right now? Like the Empire, we're almost done. We hope that you've had lots of fun. Was it relevant? Probably not. But thanks for giving this part a shot. Stay tuned for the end of Uncommon Wealth. The podcast. Stay tuned for Uncommon Takes. Did we trash your father enough to get him to hate listen to the podcast? <laughs> I'm Catherine, spending you, this episode. If you played in one segment, why did you pick the segment where I was just like shitting on loons for 15 minutes? Your national bird. So he, he chose that one because I think uh -huh. in the title it said something about loons and he thought, and I'm like that. See, I told I told you no. it would offend Canadians. <laughs> I actually think he was upset I didn't know that. that you guys cared about loons that much. It sounds Does like. Does he I know thought. about the great maple syrup heist? Uncommon wealth. The podcast.